I want to introduce um, Wilbur Abrams to come to the podium for our alma mater. So Wilbur Abrams, please. far away. Great. <clears throat> it's short, so you won't be, you know, subjected to too much of this, but, uh, yeah. Our strong bond can ne'er be broken. Far surpassing wealth unspoken, sealed by friendship's tie. Alma mater, alma mater, deep graven on each heart, shall be found unwavering true till we from life shall part. That was fun. Moving. Please welcome our first salutatory address, Leah Sperber. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Mom. When I was in kindergarten, my teacher taught us about outer space for the first time. We learned about the sun and the stars and all the work that humans were doing to reach those celestial bodies. I loved learning about spaceships and rovers, and somehow I began to assume that I would graduate high school on the surface of Mars. I didn't really want to be an astronaut, my dream job at the time was, in fact, to be a garbage man. But it just made sense to me. In the future, we would be on Mars, and my future would start the day I graduated high school. But somehow, on the path from elementary school to writing this speech, I lost track of that particular dream. And then, I did what I think a lot of my classmates have, and I lost that deeper notion behind my dreams of Mars. I lost that sense that I am guaranteed a future, or a plan, or a clear path forward. See, as a kid, it was so easy to believe that the world around me was perfect. And with absolute faith in our progress, I had nowhere to look but up. Yet, here at Woodstock Union High School, between my dedicated, caring teachers, and my smart, warm-hearted classmates, and the utterly bizarre circumstances under which we went to high school, I was forced to confront some of the ways in which our society and our community has failed. Once a month for the past six years, we've hidden under desks and in the corners of classrooms as teachers lock the doors, just in case a madman with a gun decides that this is the place to take out his rage. Members of this class have had to walk out of this school to fight for women's rights and to march for black lives. We were taught about environmental destruction as part of our history and our science curriculum, and then walked out of those very classes to protest the inaction of our leaders against climate change. We are the second class here to graduate through a pandemic. And I had to start to wonder, is this the future? Because I thought we were going to Mars. But as I began to grow up and to truly engage with life on Earth, Mars just felt further and further away. I know that a graduation speech isn't the time to address society's failings or to announce that I have no faith in my future. We're graduating today. We become adults tomorrow, and as such, we become responsible, not only for our own failings, faiths, and futures, but also for the actions and the prospects of our community. We become adults tomorrow, and I am not sure how to take my first steps into this world on such shaky ground. However, I realize now that this ground has been shaky for a long time, 
that failures can both arise within a community and be resolved within that community, and that Mars has always been 215 million miles away. If there's one thing I learned during the chaos of my last three semesters at Woodstock, it's that you don't need an impeccable past or faith in the future or even a plan for today if you can trust in the present moment and have faith in the people around you. So thank you to my classmates, our families, teachers and staff, and the greater community for giving us a moment to believe in. Thank you, Woodstock, for giving me these people, the ones that I can trust on the dark nights when it seems that Mars has vanished from the sky. Thank you for cultivating the faith that despite our own failures and the capricious future, all will be okay. I hope that each of the graduates can take that faith with them or find it again wherever they go. And I hope, genuinely, to one day make it to Mars. And I hope to see each of you there. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage to get set for a wonderful speed chorus, members of the Yo Theater, the senior members of the Yo Theater. To the graduating class of 2021, Woodstock Union High School speed chorus with haiku and writing from our own students in senior seminar. Quotes from Kamala Harris, Martin Luther King Jr., Bashar Shuper, Mom Muse, and comments from our faculty, staff, and students. The present moment. There used to be cheers. Having school shut down all year. This pandemic has magnified every existing inequality in our society. Soon things got weird. Streets empty all day, all night. Like systemic racism, gender inequality, and poverty. It was a strange sight. We had to fight for life as COVID set spikes. Every type of inequality has been exposed and amplified during this pandemic. COVID. COVID. COVID, school closing, and home. To learn from home, zooming 24 7. People who live in deprived areas have higher diagnosis rates and death rates than those living in less deprived areas. It's proven to not be the flu. Eyes glued to the news. Death count continues to rise. Stay at home. Wear a mask. In Spain, several prevalence results show that women who work as cleaners or carers, as well as migrants, were more exposed to the virus than the general population. Lockdown. I'm quarantined. Death counts continue to rise. School? In person? No. no. Remote. This pandemic reinforces what we already know. We can't keep people healthy if they don't have a roof over their head and food on the table. One, two, three. Vaccines? Fully vaccinated. We may be in the same storm, but we are in different boats. The present moment. Musings of our seniors by way of haiku. I remember when nonsense was the only sense and apples fell up, laughing way too hard, trying our best just to breathe at Optic Scum Park. I remember when apple was thrown at the door, apple jumps on the floor, at recess we played, wall ball, four square and gun, kickball and soccer. We are a diverse community committed to the discovery of promise in each of us and dedicated to the full development of intellect, curiosity, energy, energy and conscience. We, we consciously commit ourselves to encourage fellow leadership and cooperation in the competitive atmosphere of athletics. Sports pro and champion Thomas Brazilian is the responsible NHS treasurer, cares for the grounds at Sharon Elementary School, and volunteers with students. Best ice times happen when he finds scarlet letter points in his hockey skates. Gavin Huffy, curious, smart, kind, and polite, a hockey aficionado. Aiden McDermott is a mountain biker. The go-to mountain biker pairman at Woodstock Sports. Gracious, thoughtful, and direction. Manny Pacheco, go-to joke man. With a never-ending smile. Will do anything for basketball. Even an occasional English essay. Louis Mills, Scrub, maturity. Future Woodstock coach. A literal change the world kid. Basketball star. And soccer queen, Savannah Sheehan. Is intelligent Hard and great at science. Riley Shepard, fast as a bat out of 18 double hockey sticks. Future NHL player. 
Wise, giving, and kind to others. We'll tolerate watery by his bros. As they are minded. He is all vegetable. And a really fast one at that. Skier Amber Wood is athletic and determined to get this year done. We'll show up for senior lunch in room nine. Haley Chase, a basketball player who's social, likes her friends. Sadie Gravel, kind, vivid, intelligent, curious, and thoughtful. Famously ever ready for the next workout. The next game. Charles Green, Mr. Woodstock himself, school spirit king, and carried to his core. Just don't call him Charlie. Despite a season-long injury as a junior, Mason Harkins was part of every game and practice in soccer. A great teammate, best smile, will be designing amazing cars. Tyler Bean, technical, focused, baller, funny, the world's largest clay whistle, needs to slow down on his mountain bike. When I was younger, school was never cool till you. A high gave me hope. I remember when my mother packed my lunches, feeling free of care. When I was little, three girls defended me. That was powerful. We are a diverse community committed to the discovery of promise in each of us and dedicated to the full development of intellect, curiosity, energy, and conscience. We, we consciously commit ourselves to challenge and expand the limits of thought, tolerance, and performance. The voice in quiet leadership, Nova Conway, promises to tackle life, just like a decathlon, free, diligent, curious, athletic, runs like a nimble deer through the woods, Riley Cross, wise, giving, kind of woman who is going to change the world, Charlie Hamlin, entrepreneur, started a hat company, Gooba, and a snowboard empire, mannequins in the closet. Lily Tuckerman, most likely to run, and dramatically, positively, change the farming world, FFA president, Aaron Wilson, future chef and owner of his own restaurant, pursuing electrical engineering degree from UVM, Steve Slope Bunny, STEM enthusiast, Anna Steele, fierce and persistent in learning new things, known as Steely Dog in English, renowned as the backbone of staff at the Queechee Club. She worked out all pandemic long, ready for field hockey at Simmons. Kayla Kepler, confident team leader in track and cross country, always asked the best questions in physics, goes by Olaf on the trail, an exquisite captain who goes to long distances and makes them easier for all, smart enough to tag along. Taylor Plord, quiet leader with a bright smile, a tremendous athlete, and a great teammate, keeps his head together with a knit hat, will play winter soccer in the school parking lot at 7 a.m., 4 degrees, shorts, always. Leah Sperber, ambitious, can't wait to jump into the next phase of her life, fearlessly leads work rallies for the French language team and spontaneous trips to the bog as needed, expert balancer of work and life, a global leader, Maggie LaCroix, is joyful and intelligent, actress extraordinaire, pulling out all the stops, asks for extra books in her mailbox during pandemics, Andrew Gubbins, respectful, mature and kind, a great teammate, and a quiet leader, the governor. Emily Dean, most likely to work in a science lab with a project no one can pronounce and make a profound difference in the world, all the while writing the world's next most watched screenplay, a pharmaceutical rom-com. <laughs> I remember when my class consisted of ten and gnomes were our thing. Embarrassing times. Ripped my pants wide open. Full moon on display. <laughs> Threw up on my desk. It was an atrocious mess. Eyes on me. No fun. We consciously commit ourselves to develop and empower the mind, body, and spirit. A born artist, Madison Nies, is up for a challenge, tells it like it is, isn't afraid to explore the depth, dig into the truth. We'll explain the plot of Ratatouille to anyone who asks, and even to those who don't. Rhiannon Meyer, sweet, pure, unique, kind, talented journalist, knows how to connect lit to life. Joey Rander, who'll figure out the meaning of life, an incredibly talented artist, who likes to take his time, and then a little more time. Allison Bradley, most confident style, responsible volunteer, graceful sprite, amazing actress, one of the most exquisite critics and writers. Will she ever see that herself? Isabella Moses, charming, thoughtful, creative, driven, motivated, is the best at keeping ninth grade boys on task. Alexander English, curious, artistic, don't get in his way at the end of a race. Wrong! Channel the inner beast. Spontaneous, independent thinker. Immersion storytelling. Watch out. Etta Warren. Responsible. Loves to sing. Always on pitch. Joyful. Talented actress. Cole Daniels. Quiet. Dedicated to his work in industrial mechanics and welding. Polite and responsible. Joshua Mother. Artsy. Spacey. Super sense of humor. Artistic explosions. explosions. Has a way with lines.
Molly Maxim, creative vampire specialist, can talk on any subject, especially science or history. Zoe Montag, talented and disciplined artist, cherishes her friends and family, lover of anime, excels within the arts and music program, designer and podcaster, Gianna Fiorino, is creative, sharp, and witty, just about finesse the sophomore shot of day, with a rock star, loves her game, competitive, Maeve Hoff, wise, creative, open, full of potential, knows more about The Bachelor than anyone, heading to Smith. Una Tracy, steady and graceful as a tree, IHP diva, bound to have her own sitcom, or prime reality TV show, eats a lot of veggies, great laugh, field willis, dedicated, athletic, an incredible artist, thoughtful thinker, funny, tree climber, Celia Burrington, is caring, driven, and thoughtful, passionate about languages, voracious reader, she may have, if not only her own language, and several other worlds going, all at once, on top of being on top of this one, she can dribble more than a soccer ball, Ed Young, science journalist for The Atlantic, says, We long to return to normal, but normal led to this. To avert future pandemics we know are coming, we must grapple with all the ways normal failed us. We have to build something better. We consciously commit ourselves to stop, to be in the present, to support and engage each person's unique gifts. Wilbur Abrams, Electric Creativity. If Wilbur is missing, be sure to check the treetops. Best known for hauling rusty car parts from the river. And abandoned lawnmowers from trailblazing runs on Mount Tom. Ultima Ultimate Marathon Orator, Nate P. Lynn. Wilbur knows how to bring upon Helsing, or Polonius for that matter, to life. Maya Aziz, imaginative, driven, curious, passionate, fighter, thoughtful, caring, adventurous. Ella Ballou, sweet, serious acting chops, cares about social justice. The best Greek chorus leader a Latin teacher could find, kicks butt with a Rubik's Cube. Chloe Bergstrom, so many talents, what will she do? Movie makeup artist, motivational poster designer, she has perseverance, the ability to connect with others, and a caring nature. Famous on stages in faraway places, Finn Powers is a future theater director, dashingly handsome, D&D dungeon master, Avery Shoemaker, a talented artist, positive energy, great at science, incredibly hardworking, great friend, Sarah Spray, creative, is full of heart, knows how to sizzle, American lip, you to a 21st century code, but when code hems her in, she writes or draws her own, bandit for the ball, Willow Carr, artsy, sweet, clever, Brilliant with so much potential. Splendid host of the Candidates Forum. Macaroni cartoon. Illustrator. Eliza Dodson. A creative problem solver. Greatest laugh ever. Time management expert. The most amazing ceramic trash can of all time. Riley Earl. Slow and steady. Thoughtful. Creative. Beautiful singing voice. With expansive sound and beauty. Lilia McCullough. Ambitious. Always cheerful. As well as respectful. Believes in her Tuesday, Friday cohort. Self-taught expert in Korean cooking. Does homework mere hours after it's posted. Parker Koenig. Respectful. Mature. And kind. Great summer intern at the Woodstock History Center. Hardworking and thoughtful. A quote from Kamala Harris. You now know that you have what it takes to get through pretty much anything. So when you come up against an obstacle, when you experience a setback, and you will, we all do, remember the resilience that you showed this past year. The determination. Remember that you have the strength to get through anything. Noah Anderson. Environmentally engaged. Avid hiker and reader. Snapping up all the texts on the edge of AP Lit. Tommy Orange's There Van. Kafka's Metamorphosis. In his spare time, he peruses T.S. Eliot. And experiments with the beat poets. Orion Beardsley. Went to school in Texas. Texas. Early college for senior year. Gracious. Deep, resonant voice. Sam Blanchard. Leader of the boot crew. Focused on his future. Most famous for calmly removing. A dead woodpecker. That flew to its bitter end. Into the school bus of squealing sophomores. Returning from Western, Western Theater. Redefining Hambone's lines from. I want my ham. To. I want my woodpecker. <laughs> Tobin Calder. Sweet. Diligent. One critical prong of the quietly powerful triumvirate. This team knows how to tackle a pandemic. Dynamic. Super chill. Dylan Ball. Horticulture enthusiast. Devoted to family. Friend to many. Max Phillips. Football player. Gentle soul. Hopeful for the future. Dedicated. Haley Barrio. Great safe school ambassador. And mentor to younger students. Had the computer science bug before anyone else in the school. Beautiful, clear singing voice. Caitlin Go. Family is important to her. Quiet and caring. A heart of gold. Ford enthusiast. Snowboarder. Sarah Hirschfield. Laughing. Kind. Wise and giving. Mountain Island Hopper. Ellen Smith. Courageous. Terror. And a good friend. She sang rap in front of the whole school. 
about treating people well. Helped out with the Learn to Play Hockey program, even though she is a figure skater. A great friend and support to her peers, Lily Sorrentino is caring, curious, and has the cutest dog. Never stops eating in math class. A constant feeding frenzy. Natasha Springer, kind, lost but found. Loves fashion and sports. Always friendly. Cassandra Somerset, good work ethic. Determined to accomplish her goals. Reliable, thorough. Chloe McKay, frankly and open, ready to make the world a better place, worthy of understanding the underworld at Worthy, wants to blow up the system, infectious energy, Ronaldo McDonald, first and only year with us, a one and done guy, too bad, he is kind, hardworking, caring, an independent person, helping family, environmentalist, danced his way through trigonometry, I remember when we were kids and worry-free. No care in the world. I remember when we were new. Now we are leaving. The end of an era slowly drawing near. Filled with conflicting emotions. The sweet embrace of summer. With flowers blooming. And birds chirping. This summer will be electrifying. Unmasked. Uncaged. A social summer. Isabel Hiller, driven, kind and caring. Future CIA agent. Figured out how to tour the West Coast during the pandemic. Chase Christensen, early college at VTC, conscientious, and a broad thinker, hockey player, Riley Chandler, funny, true theater king, a master behind the deli counter, and quite good at tucking things in track and field. Wesley Cluyer, gentle giant, the sheep still stands in Latin club, big fat, straightforward, no BS of any kind, stick to his gun, an arborist, outdoors mode, the best friend anyone could ask for, Taylor Crompton, hilarious, curious, motivated, and given, with a contagious laugh, Tay Tay Crompton. Ava Dodson, sense of humor, helpful to others, very put together, hockey goalie, great style. Daniel Drever, focused, intelligent, one who reaches dreams, broke the most pencils, effective animal mating calls, infectious laugh. Molly Shearer, always has a can-do attitude, thoughtful and reflective, loves thunderstorms, knows how to make a granny ride appear fast and fleet. Paige Sorrell, hard worker, graceful horsewomanship, plants seeds every year in the greenhouse, and has the best garden. Madeline Trimpey. If Mother Earth had a sister, it would be Maddie. Agreed. Climate change activist. Beautiful artist. Always gives 100%. Ben, ben Burke. Master line chef at Prince and the Popper. Knows the ropes from dishwasher on up. Enjoys working way ahead on assignments. Clearing his runway for life. Carrie Young. Young. Opinionated. We'll let you know where she stands. Passionate about animals. Beautiful singing voice. Actress. A great photographer. Kayla Palazzo. Is kind and caring. Deeply insightful. Summer. And driven. Brooke, Brooke Rebido. Transferred as a senior. And worked fully remote. Always pleasant. And easy to work with. Laura Shan. Smiley. Dedicated. Determined. Strong. Hard worker. And stands up for others. Even mellow, focused, intelligent, thoughtful, asks great questions. Beware. Will read ahead and send out spoilers. Knows all about Roman history and their military. A born teacher. Emily Keating is lovely, kind, pure, and humble. Always positive. And a joy to be greeted by in the hall. Allison Ben Alstein. Eager to move on with life. Tackled remote learning in force. Super sweet and genuine. Here we are. In this present moment. As we move on, be who you are. Learn from your mistakes. Take your time. Fall down. Get up. Remember that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. So be alive to one another's struggles. Stand up to one another's rights. Leave behind all the old ways of thinking that divide us. Sexism, racial prejudice, status, greed, and then set the world on a different path. Great. 
sires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change that lie from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive in this great turning we shall learn. Next, please welcome co-valedictorian Noah Anderson. Good evening, afternoon, I'm not too sure what it is really anymore. <laughs> anyway. When I first began writing this speech, I didn't know what to say. I wrote down potential ideas, gathered quotes from books in my room in search of inspiration, and thought back on other speeches I've heard. But nothing really worked, so I wrote down a list of impossible goals instead. I wanted to avoid cliche, be memorable, not be too serious, all while saying something important. Child's play, really. In Atlas Shrugged, Ayn Rand tells us that man is, quote, just a collection of chemicals with delusions of grandeur. I'm not really an Ayn Rand fan, but here I think she gets something right. Look no further than me, getting up in front of you of hopes of being remembered for saying something profound when in reality all I've done so far is ramble. Because really, we don't want to be forgotten. We want to be commended on our successes, have the spotlight shown on us in some way. But spotlights dim, our triumphs fade over time. History marches relentlessly, and we all spend our lives fighting against it, doing what we can to become a void being lost in its annals, relegated to names on our great-great-grandchildren's family tree project. More often than not, we're too caught up in daily life to see the occasions that will one day be taught in classroom to glassy-eyed students hidden in textbook chapters never read. That's okay. We don't have to appreciate every passing second or constantly give thanks to a higher power for the niceties of modern life. Obviously, the past year will be talked about for generations, and we confront the way the pandemic upended our lives on a daily basis. But I don't wake up in the morning and marvel about the technological advancements that made it possible for a vaccine to be available this quickly. Honestly, how many of you do? I'm not trying to make you feel bad, I promise. I'm trying to illustrate a larger point that 50 years from now, when kids read about the lockdowns and the surges and the vaccines and everything else from the past year, they'll see it as linear, the events fitting neatly one after another on a timeline. Because they're looking back, they'll be able to see the larger historical context and their takeaways won't be muddied by personal experiences. And when complex historical events get boiled down to fit neatly on a page, they can seem absolute. Sometimes they are. Wars have starts and ends. Inventions, too, happened at specific times. Issues arise, however, when we begin to view everything through that absolutist lens. Because our understanding of history isn't complete, we shouldn't absentmindedly accept what we're taught as unconditional fact. So many so-called hot-button issues are controversial today as a direct result of differing understandings of the past. Over this last year, we've seen police brutality disproportionately perpetuated against people of color 
and have begun to reevaluate our relationship with race throughout history. We've asked hard questions. We've asked how centuries of slavery are still manifesting today. We've begun to question larger systems like policing, education, voting even, and if their structures continue to be relevant. And some of us have wrestled with these uncomfortable truths and come to understand that we need change. That just because we learned that slavery was abolished and we passed the Civil Rights Act, that we still have issues and we still have work to do. And this wrestling with history goes beyond the systems I just mentioned. There's so much we've learned that we accept as fact. We study the Constitution and the founding of our country as a foregone conclusion. And the ideas that Washington and Hamilton and Madison and Jefferson had are near sacrosanct. We see our government and are upset by its inaction, but are seldom upset by the root of that inaction. Everything from how we vote to the three branches of government to such obscure topics as the filibuster have existed for so long that they are taken for granted. And as I said before, this questioning isn't supposed to be easy. It's hard to take something you know and love and have it turned upside down, thrown out, and decried. Hearing how the police are racist and how America has failed time and again to live up to its promise of all men created equal, or how the government we've had for over 200, now year, 200 years now is outdated and inefficient are really, really hard. We don't want that to be true because it would be admitting that we're wrong, that something is fundamentally wrong and has been for a very long time. But we're going to be wrong. We're going to be wrong and wrong again. We're going to try to make changes and fail at those too, but the point is we're trying. Coming to the end of the speech, I'm sad. I'm sad for all the normal reasons. I'm sad because soon I'll be leaving, because I'm leaving behind too many regrets. I'm sad because for too many of you, this will be the last real interaction we'll have. But I'm also sad that this is the speech I gave, that I couldn't get up here and talk about all the hardships we endured and how we're coming out of this stronger. I'm sad because I couldn't bring myself to write that speech, because for all the silver linings we can find in the past year, we are lucky to be here together and too many aren't. I'm sad because the speeches we so desperately need, the ones I mentioned and all the ones I didn't, will be made too late or not at all. And I'm sad because the speech changes nothing. All it is is self-serving, designed to make me feel good, and lecture you on things you already know or have no interest in hearing. T.S. Eliot tells us that the world will end not with a bang, but a whimper. We're whimpering right now, but unlike a bang, a whimper isn't sudden. We have time to see what's wrong and change it. Let's make that change. Let's stop whimpering. Thank you. Next, please welcome senior members of our symphonic band. Thank you. 
Please welcome co-valedictorian and president of the class of 2021, Isabel Hiller. As Leah and Noah said, they avoided the cliche. And as you could ask any one of my classmates, I would be the one to cover it. So <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> we are living through a time in history that we did not ask to be a part of. Some of us lost junior and senior sports seasons, our chances to become captains and team leaders. Some of us lost our final chances to compete for roles in clubs we put our all into in prior years. Some of us lost our final opportunities to perform or display art. However, although losing time in these past couple years to a virus was certainly not what we planned, we have the choice of seeing the cup as half full or half empty, as cheesy as that is. We may not have been able to see each other in the classroom and through the halls for a good four months, but from another view, we had a four month staycation in which our grades could only get better. Although we didn't have as many senior privileges as previous classes for a good portion of the year, we did have what one could call pandemic privileges. It's hard to complain about going to school two days a week, maybe three if you count PJ day. I mean Wednesday Zooms. The SAT wasn't even required on college applications. That's an undeniable win. More importantly, aside from the lessons we've learned throughout the pandemic, we have to recognize how far we've come, and we must remember the little things. Remember so long ago when we toured the middle school, guided by the towering and intimidatingly cooler seventh and eighth graders, terrified and confused by the intricate labyrinth? Now we look at the seventh graders and wonder, was I really that short? And yes, a lot of us were. However, we've all grown, some physically, some not so much, but all of us in wisdom and maturity in one sense or another. Phrases and advice from teachers had very different meanings four years ago versus now. Challenge yourself was interpreted for us to strive for academic excellence and go above and beyond, whether we did so or not. Now we're older, wiser, and more savvy. We challenge ourselves to the pressure of time testing how much information our brains can review and retain in a five-minute study session before the exam. The infamous Poublon quote, this is trash, used to just be a funny remark. But now we really understand its succinct yet unabridged meaning. A 66.7 in Bremel's geometry class was the equivalent feeling of having no other choice than the last Caprici rap. Whereas in AP Calculus, that same 66.7 feels like the first bite into a fresh farmer sandwich. We surely are no longer fellows as grasshoppers, and even more bittersweetly, no longer perk spares. Likewise, anyone and everyone will miss Pickley's kindness and her shush wand, Mr. Brennan's selflessness as the universal tutor, no matter the subject or the time, whether he has a class or not, our loving class parents, Mr. and Mrs. Henderson, and surely the unmatchable energy of the language department. Extrañare especialmente la tutoría y la locura de Betsy y Ms. O'Connell. <laughs> Here we've made unforgettable memories and built relationships with peers, friends, teachers, and staff that will be a part of us for the rest of our lives. All the experiences, good and not so great, that we have gone through up to this point make us who we are. And the best part is, we're not done yet. So lastly, I'll leave you with a poem and some final remarks. Sometimes we wish our dreams were too outlandish for us to think that they could possibly be reached. Because then maybe our hopes would cease to soar up in the clouds like a bird we can't keep down, that maybe could fly forever free or else be shot to the ground. Sometimes it just seems safer to keep those hopes and dreams locked up in a cage where they will never face rejection because they'll never see the light of day. We can be so afraid of failure, rather just not try at all, and regardless of whether we do or don't, we feel so overwrought. 
because we don't want to lie about what our hearts want and what we believe we're capable of. Then pray that we don't feel the loss. But we also feel scared to be honest about it because what about the people who clearly doubt it? What if I start on track and end up lost? Still, I know in my soul, wings aren't meant to be clipped, and this bird wants my faith before anyone else's. I could get the green light a billion times, and it would all be worthless if I can't trust myself with the dreams that are written on my very bones. The dreams I'm relieved are too stubborn to ever leave me alone. I hope today you remember that the sky is not humiliated by its vastness, and the mountains remain unashamed of their height. Mother Earth and her oceans are not afraid of their size, and the sun is not concerned if someone has to squint their eyes. It will shine, and it will not apologize for its light. And like the trees teach us, it's okay to lose our leaves as seasons change, and then come back to life. And if I can love the stars and how they're scattered throughout space, then can't I love the acne scars making constellations on my face? If I can love the crater moon that hangs there in the sky, then can't I love the texture on the bottom of my thighs? If I can love every waterfall and stand in awe of their might, then can't I love the curious ambition that flows through my own two eyes? If you have to pick yourself apart, if you find you really can't quit, then might it be better to look in your mirror for pieces of the universe in your skin? For a moment, can we change the rules we use to judge whether or not we're beautiful? Whenever I speak to the sunrise or sunset, I don't insist they shrink or be tame. And maybe with practice and a little more noticing, we can speak to ourselves the same. I hope that nature teaches us to look at ourselves and be kind. I hope that we don't dim, shrink, or fold into places far too tight. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next, I hope you look at yourself and you are kind. Wow, we're graduating. Obviously, I know what that means. People have been throwing the word around like it means nothing, but our lives are moving forward for better or worse. Last time I checked, we were still juniors, excited because we were getting an extended break. I didn't realize that the last day I would step into all my classes would be so soon. I don't think we were prepared for that. But now it's our time. Now we're leaving. Leaving our home, our friends, some of them anyways. We'll meet new ones along the way. It's all part of the journey. We knew this day would come, we just didn't realize it would be so soon. Some of us procrastinated buying a cap and gown because we did not want it to end. We don't want this chapter of not having to figure out taxes to end. But it needs to. We'll continue to experience and make memories that mold us into who we are meant to become, and Woodstock Union High School will always be shared in our memories and in our hearts. Thank you.